Greetings, welcome to Day of the Indie. This tutorial is part of our introduction to 3D graphics series. Be sure to check out our previous video where you can learn some of the basic concepts you can apply to 3D authoring tools like Magicka Voxel. This tutorial is a basic introduction to Magicka Voxel, a very popular 3D authoring tool used to create 3D voxel graphics. What makes it even more attractive is that it is free for any project. That's right, no commercial licenses required. However, when you use it, be kind and give credit where credit is due. Voxel graphics has become extremely popular with games like Minecraft, Crossy Road and Pac-Man 256. It's definitely a unique art style. Think of it as the 3D version of 2D pixel art. So why voxel graphics? Well the short answer to that is that voxel graphics is the shortest path you can take to creating sophisticated 3D graphics for your very own 3D games. You don't need to go spend hours and hours to learn one of the big 3D authoring tools out there. With voxel graphics you can get going right now. Okay, let's get going. Go grab yourself the latest version of Magicka Voxel. You can find Magicka Voxel at f3c.github.io. It's available for both Windows and Mac OS. At the time of this recording, the current version is version 0.98. If you are a Mac OS user, take careful note of the additional instructions that you may have to perform to get Magicka Voxel running. Once you've got it installed, start it up. This way you can follow along. Let's start with the user interface. At first glance, Magic of Voxel looks like something out of a science fiction movie. Don't let that discourage you, because once you know your way around the interface, you wouldn't want it any other way. The interface is divided into a few swimming lane panels, with each panel focused on a specific task. You can hide the panels by clicking on the panel tab and then unhide them by clicking on the toggle tab button again. This helps you to maximize that precious screen real estate when you deal with larger designs. Let's take a look at the file panel next. This provides access to the file system where you can load, save, delete, create and even duplicate voxel models. In model mode you can load entire voxel models on their own. In pattern mode, you can load voxel models as patterns. To load a model, simply click on the model name and it will load into the designer view. Right at the bottom of this panel is where you'll find the export options. Let's move on to the edit panel. Here you'll find a few convenience tools and options to help you with some common editing tasks. Under the tool options, Full will fill the entire canvas. I'm just going to undo the changes with Command Z as we go along. Zero will clear the entire canvas. Full fills the current model with the current selected color. 2x scales the current model by a factor of 2. Under the select options, All will select everything. Inverse will invert the current selection. None will deselect everything. You can then use copy, cut and paste on the current selected area with these options. Rotate will rotate the model around a specific axis. Flip will flip the model on a specific axis. Loop scrolls the model on a desired axis and the voxels will loop over. Scale will scale the model to a desired scale. Repeat will use the model in a repeat pattern. Finally, Shape generates a few basic shapes to the extents of your current canvas size. Okay, let's move on to the center panel. 
this is your main design area. At the top, you'll be able to switch between model and render mode. This is a common concept used in most 3D authoring tools. You'll spend most of your time in model mode while creating your 3D voxel models. Render mode is used to generate a pretty snapshot of your model using realistic lighting, shadows, materials and post-processing effects. Next to that is your model name. Here you can provide a name for your model, then just hit the quick save button to save it. The three numbers just below the name are the voxel model canvas size. This defines the width, depth and height of the voxel model. Right in the middle is your center stage. This is your main designer view for your voxel model. To rotate the view around the model, simply click and hold your right mouse button, then move your mouse up, down, left or right. To zoom in or out, roll your mouse wheel up and down. At the bottom, there's a quick screenshot option which will save the current view as an image. You can also choose between four different camera modes, perspective, free, orthographic and isometric. You can toggle a camera ruler on and off for more precise camera control. You can also do a quick reset of your camera which will reset the camera view to the extents of your current voxel model. Next on the list is the brush panel. Note that this panel is only accessible while you're in the model mode. Right at the top, you'll be able to switch between the available brush modes, ranging from voxel, face, box, line, center and pattern mode. You can also use the corresponding shortcut key to quickly switch between these modes. So you can simply press V to switch to voxel mode, B for box mode and so forth. You then have a choice of a few additional options of how you want the current selected brush to influence the current voxel design. Attach will add voxels to the design. Erase will remove voxels from the design. Paint will color the voxels in the design with the selected color. Move will allow you to move the entire design in a desired direction. There are also additional settings available based on the current selected brush mode. We'll review those in more detail in other tutorials. On to the very last panel, the palette panel. Here you've got access to four preloaded 8-bit color palettes, giving you a choice of 256 colors per palette. Simply click on the desired color to select it as your primary voxel color. You can adjust the selected color value by expanding the Hue Saturation value panel at the bottom. You can also toggle the RGB mode with this hamburger button. Save your custom palette using the Save button and load palettes with the Open button. Well, folks. That brings us to the end of this tutorial. You should now have a very good idea of what Magica Voxel is and how to navigate your way through its magical user interface. Cheers for now, until next time. And remember, if you're not having fun, you're probably not doing it right.